Mr. Trump's just walked in. I'm going to have to get off. <laughs> Joe, I'll be there soon. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. But Liz, one of the implications of what you just said, what you and Joe were just talking about, is, is your father's, you know, obvious loyalty and love of this country and his fear that uh, something c catastrophic could well happen because our national security is not as strong now uh, because of the events of the last two or three months as it was when he was vice president. One of the implications of that is that with this knowledge, with this feeling, why is he not banging on the door of the White House to say, sit down with me. I've talked to CIA people who won't talk to you. Here's what I have to say, what they say. Where is he? Could I say, well, I think you've seen him every place, Mike. But, and not I, in the me, White let House. Let me also point out, Mike, that the people in the White House now have access to all of the intelligence that he had access to. They've got it there. They see the threat reporting. They see what these programs did. You know, so they know. And I'm sure he would be, you know, more than happy to sit down quietly, openly, publicly. This is an issue he cares deeply about. But, he's so, not, but, he's not but I think on that the, the other, I think it's very clear that he'd talk to anybody who wants to talk to him and about this. They, they are knocking reach on out. his door. They yeah. should reach out to him. And what they're doing, if you watch the press briefing yesterday, was Gibbs standing up saying he's looking backward to look forward or up to look down. They're the ones who released the techniques. They're the ones who said, and this is a really important point, they're the ones who said not only are we going to change the policy, which it's their right to do, they said we are potentially going to prosecute the people who carried out this policy. We are potentially going to recommend you know, disbarment for the lawyers who wrote these legal opinions. So they're out there not just saying you guys were wrong, you did the wrong thing, but we're going to take criminal action against Let me you. Ask That's you never before happened in the history of the nation as far as I know. Are, are you saying, are you going as far to say that your father is speaking in the press because the White House will not talk to him, no, will not hear I'm him not on this. That. I mean, I don't know if they would hear him or not. You know, I think they could find him if they wanted to. They know the phone number for the transition office. He is out there speaking because this is a critically important issue and because we are a democracy. And in a democracy, the people get the right to choose and to decide. And they need to have all the facts to make these decisions. So if the Obama administration is going to begin changing these policies, dismantling the policies, and attempting to criminally prosecute or to take, you know, uh, corrective action, punishment against those who put the policies in place, everybody has a right to say, wait a second, let's, let's stop for a minute and think about exactly what you're doing I here. I certainly agree the conversation should be had. Is there no back channel communication at all? Anyone in the administration? I would imagine beyond the, the public He's pressure that there would the be so, so some, some behind the scenes them. pressure on him actually not to be speaking out. Behind uh, the scenes pressure from who? Well, I mean, your dad knows General Jim Jones. Why doesn't he call him? Look, General Jim Jones could call my dad. I mean, they, if, they, if they really want to know exactly what it is that he's concerned about, that he wants released, I mean, he took the proactive step of saying, here are two memos, gentlemen. Here are two memos that talk about the success of the detainee program. He called the memos to their attention, and he said, why don't you declassify those memos so the American people can see them? And 40 days later, there's been no response, while the White House continues to declassify stuff they want to declassify. How do you think your dad feels about uh, yesterday and uh, coming out of the Pentagon with regard to Afghanistan? We've had the removal of General McKinnon. It's a, it's, it's a momentous story, truly. Uh, and it's largely been put into place by Secretary Gates because the policy in Afghanistan, the military operations in Afghanistan, have not been as successful as, as we'd want them to be. A lot of people in the military uh, and in the intelligence community think that's because the focus on Afghanistan was lost because of our war in Iraq. How does your dad feel about what's going on in Afghanistan? Well, I'll tell you how I feel about it. Um, you know, I think that the first thing to remember is that before the Bush administration left office, there was a policy review of Afghanistan underway. And they knew at that point that we needed to, you know, in, in every uh, combat arena, the enemy gets to make a choice about how they're going to fight. And when the enemy makes a choice, you've got to be able to change your strategy and respond. And we knew we needed to do that in Afghanistan. I think that the um, uh, naming of uh, General McChrystal to take over in Afghanistan is a very good move. I think he is uh, a terrific terrific uh, combat veteran, somebody who's had many tours in Iraq, and somebody who I think will do a terrific job in Afghanistan. I think the administration got that but one is, right. Isn't that a repudiation, though, of then the Bush strategy? No. I mean, I think, look, you know, we're at war. 
and the Bush administration understood we're at war. Um, it's nice that this administration knows we're at war in Afghanistan, but you know we we had the same situation in Iraq. Sometimes you've got to change strategy. In Iraq, it was necessary to put the surge in place to, to adopt the counterinsurgency strategy and surge new troops in. That's how war works. No, you can't leave without slapping me around about you, you know my saying earlier that your dad was consistently wrong and everything that he said publicly about the war in Iraq. So well, it was go ahead, you slide. were wrong, Mike. I mean, you know, uh, it's not the first I'll wait till we get out there to actually slap you. Okay. But um, look, I think that's sort of the conventional wisdom out there. But if you look at what we've accomplished in Iraq, if you look at the fact that Saddam Hussein's gone, that Iraq is not a safe haven for terrorism against the United States, that there's not a potential anymore, that the, the capability to develop weapons of mass destruction, that that technology will be passed to terrorists from Iraq. Um, the surge itself showed sort of, you know, the, the bravery and the courage and the effectiveness of America's fighting men and women. Uh, I think you've got to say at this point that the doubters about Iraq have been proven wrong. Now, Iraq, there were mistakes, and it took a lot longer than I think anyone would have wanted it to take. But I think that, you know, we are on the verge of winning that war, and you've got to give that credit to Dick Cheney and George Bush. Do you think in retrospect, and we only have a few seconds here, <laughs> talking about the war in Iraq, do you think in retrospect your dad given a moment in time, would have liked to have sat down with Tommy Frank several years ago and say, no, no, go back, we need more troops. No, that's a very complicated question. I think that the the initial operation to take Baghdad was masterfully implemented. I think that after we took Baghdad, there were things that we did wrong that we could have done better. I think the insurgency itself, you know, the fact that Al-Qaeda made Iraq the central front meant that we didn't just need more troops in. And if we had just put more troops in, I don't think we would have had the success we've had. It meant that we needed a counterinsurgency strategy, which we got with General Odierno and, and Dave Petraeus. Now, it's a fascinating conversation, and where I'll disagree with the White House is I think we should look back. I mean, my brother worked uh, in the Bush administration, and there's a lot of interesting conversations that happen at our dinner table as a result of this. Love having you on the show. Great We'd love for you here. to come back. Well, I'd love to. I love um, your show. You guys are terrific. I do think we need to do more than the headlines on this and more than the radio hosts who are sort of bloviating about it. I think we need to really talk about this and get into the details. But I don't want to trash all the radio hosts. That's okay, because there's some good ones out there. <laughs> including Rush <Rachel> Limbaugh. <laughs> Liz Cheney, thank you very much. Great, Great to, to see you. Thank you. Coming up next, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist Eugene Robinson. We'll be right back with more Morning Joe.